friends, it's M, and welcome back to one of my most anticipated videos of the year. We are setting up my book journal for 2024. Now, let me just start by saying, so I do this, I'm all over the place as usual. So if, you know, I'm doing the pages a bit out of order, but we're starting with my 2024 bookish goals. And this is really exciting for me because <laughs> as you know, if you're, if you follow the channel, you know that I'm really big into wanting to make sure that I'm reading diversely. So my first goal for 2024 is to read a hundred or more books by BIPOC authors. Now I did do this in 2023, but <laughs> It came down to the wire and I don't want it to be like that. I want to be actively prioritizing BIPOC authors. Secondly, I want to track the money that I've saved by using the library. My old library in Indiana would do this every time I checked out a physical book and they would just like on the receipt, it would say something like you've saved $300 this year. And I really liked that. I thought it was really fun. So <clears throat> I want to do that this year. And it's, that's going to be just mostly, I guess in my spreadsheet, I can just say, this is how much the book costs. I don't know. But I do also want to build a little free library. So I do, I do read a lot and it is, it is tough for a book to stay on my shelves. That's what I'll say, because I'm not a huge rereader. So like usually a three star book is not going to make the cut but my three star could be somebody else's five star so i want to build a little free library right now i just give uh all of my books to members of my book club um or more specifically one of the members of my book club Rissy, Rissy reads she has a little free library so i'll offload them on her I also just want to post more bookish content this year. That's more catered to Instagram because I would say about 50% of my content here is bookish, but I don't know. I feel like I want to do some more kind of challenges almost where like I read what my favorite authors tell me to read, etc. I don't know. <clears throat> I also want to host Cozython again. Cozython was a readathon that I hosted for a weekend with Shanna from Cozy Gray Library and it was so fun like I think I picked the least cozy weekend for me because I didn't get to do anything cozy but I would love to do it again and then finally reading the books that I already own <laughs> that's a big thing my my TBR cart is just like crying and dying and sad I'm, I'm working on it. The, the problem is that I just keep bringing in new books <laughs> through various channels and that's, that's where it goes. Also, this year we're doing Bookopoly again. We love a Bookopoly. So this is uh, a challenge hosted by myself and Knit Plan Jess. We have a board, we have a, a group chat for everyone who wants to talk about the prompts and stuff. So. All of that is on the Bookopoly highlight in my, uh, on my Instagram. <clears throat> and here I really liked that the, uh, the Art Pop brush pens, some, most of them matched perfectly with like the primary colors. So I ended up using those. And here I'm just writing out all of the prompts so I can have a little check checklist. Uh, we also have a story graph challenge also linked in that highlight. But honestly, Bookopoly is one of the most fun things I feel like I do each year just because it we get to come up with all the prompts and stuff like that, right? But I feel like it also inspires people to read things outside of their normal genres because it's going to be sometimes it's really hard to find, you know, a, a thriller novel that also features a renaissance fair or something, right? Um... I feel like in romance, right? Rom romance, it's a little bit easier to find a lot of these tropes, but I don't know. I just, I really, really enjoy it. Um, we also do quarterly prizes. So each quarter, um, provided you have an Amazon wish list, and if you don't, then you, you make one. Um, we just draw at random from all of the people who have participated. 
and you get more entries based on you know the number of prompts that you meet and that's it that's it it's 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 so simple i also love jojo's pretty paper shop jojo is amazing and i begged her i literally begged her to make these bookshelf trackers again so last year i tried using it to track my physical books and i i didn't fill it all in right so instead what i'm going to do this year is this is going to be where i track my bipoc author books and i'm actually going to be able to use the month tracker here because i can track by you know each month what what i read it's it's going to be super great and i don't have to own these books yet right because i do read a lot of net galley books so this is great and like there's there's something so aesthetically pleasing about a tracker like getting filled up all the way and i feel like i haven't i haven't been able to do that lately because you know with pop sugar and 52 i start i start fading after like march because <laughs> there's so many prompts um but here this is something that i'm going to be doing all year and i can i can just update this when i'm updating my uh, journal every single month i really like that next classic a to z readathon so here a to z readathon all you do is the title of the book starts with the letter and then you can mark it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to print out the covers of the books and put them in once i have like read them I will say that for some titles, <laughs> um, specifically, I think Q and X, there's a little more leniency. So like sometimes um, with the author, if the author's name starts with a Q, people will take it. Or if there's an X in the title at all, so like Saint X would count because not, no book title start, very few book titles start with an X. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> okay okay um and you'll note that like some of these spreads are really plain right now and then i go back and i add more more decoration uh, this was a multiple day process <laughs> mostly because i'm still missing my pop sugar challenge stickers so i was kind of like waiting for those to see if they'd show up they haven't yet um and that's no shade to the to the sticker um to the sticker shop it's just that like i really wanted them <laughs> but all i'm gonna do is just put those on a page so it's like it's everything else is pretty much pretty much settled except for one spread that we'll talk about later also i had a little bit of extra space so i'm adding in uh number exclamation point question mark and and symbols so those ones are just gonna be if the title has it in it but i thought I don't know, I just thought it was fun, and it kind of rounded out the page. Also, this year I want to track every book that we read for the Knox Book Club. So if you're local to Knoxville, um, all are welcome at our book club. Uh, our January read is Fun Home. So, I don't know, I, th I, th I thought the story was kind of cute. In January, we usually read a nonfiction, and then uh, Racy suggested that we read a graphic novel, and then someone said, well, Fun Home is both. So that's where we're at. I'm so excited. I already have my hold from the library, but I want to wait until it's actually January to read it. Just because if I read it too far in ad advance, then I usually like forget everything. But alternatively, I could also just like, I don't, I don't want to buy the book until I know I like it though. That, that's, my, that's my big thing that I do, that some people will just buy books willy nilly. I like to read it first and then buy it. But we'll skip ahead. We're skipping ahead to 52 Book Club. So these stickers are from Plan It With Stickers. I think that's the shop. <laughs> and so we have 52 prompts. I will tell you that I can fit 50 on two pages in my uh, 8x8 notebook. So we're going to make a tip in for the last two and then there's the third one that just says, I finished. <laughs> but 52 book club, there's 52 prompts. So if you read one book per week and you are like really careful about which books you choose, you'll be able to finish the challenge. Now, I ran into an issue uh, in the past 
where I got to a point and I was just like, I don't wanna. <laughs> so for me, I think it, it's a little bit easier if I pick each month, like some of the more difficult prompts, like Nordic Noir. I'm not, I'm not just gonna stumble into that usually. So if I plan that part in advance, and I think that, that that'll go in part with like my TBRs being a bit more intentional. I think, um, I know that there's, I really wanted to read the Parable of the Sower graphic novel for their, uh, Octavia Butler prompt, but I didn't, I did not. And, you know, that's okay. For the most part, they're pretty easy. There's usually, like, I would say maybe 10 or so that you're going to have to, like, actively try to, to find something. But, like, hybrid genre, buy a neurodivergent author. Those are usually pretty easy. Especially because mystery thriller is a, is a hybrid genre. Romanticy, hybrid genre. Um, and so, I'm pretty happy with it. I, like, I think that it's really fun. Next. Okay, this is so exciting. I love the buzzword readathon. So, that's put on by Books and Lala here on YouTube. And so for each month, she suggests like a buzzword that's in the title. So this year, I'm really excited. I think it's going to be a lot easier than last year. Last year, I, f I just finished in December because I could not for the life of me find a book that had good in the title <laughs> I don't until I read The Good, The Bad, and The Aunties. So here, uh, the, the 12 prompts are as follows. So there's there, there, there. <laughs> any of the spellings, uh, positive, character names, nature, so nature words, every. So you'll note that when she used quotation marks, those are ones where it has to have that in the title. So it could be everything, everywhere, whatever. Um, and then obviously when this came out, I didn't have the, uh, the prompts yet. So I just wrote them at the top, but we've got repeating words, measurement, like, senses, relationships, only, and holiday words then this is so exciting okay so I feel like last year my my um my 12 friends 12 Rex was really slow to fill up I think because last year I don't know if I don't think I had as much like presence in the book community like I wasn't friends with a bunch of book people yet but I am now so I'm so excited. There, like, there are so many of these reads. First of all, there are, are multiple indie authors on this one. I feel like last year I had like a couple, and this year it's like boom, boom, boom. So, out on a limb from Helsinki with love, root bound, give me butterflies. All of those are indie authors. I think Butcher and Blackbird might be too. That one is taking Instagram by storm. <laughs> Then of course, uh, my friend Dan always gets me to read the next book in the Red Rising trilogy. So we've got Golden Sun on there. And I'm, I think I'm waiting until January to start putting in holds for things. Um, like I have, I have some of these, if they're on KU, they're already in, on my Kindle. Uh, my friend Carson who suggested Love Interest to me, got me Love Interest for Christmas, which is super sweet. Um, and then I think I have a couple more of these on audio or like that I think I can get from the library pretty easily. And I'm really bad at remembering everyone who's like sent everything, but we have a really, a really big mix of fantasy. So I know well, Golden Sun is kind of like more sci-fi, but Trust of the Emerald Sea, super fantasy. What the River Knows, I'm pretty sure that is more like modern fantasy and then a tale of fragile fate i have no idea what that one's about but i know it's a fantasy book <laughs> we also have some like really steamy ones so i know we have we have the roommate um by rosie dannon and i think they wanted me to read the intimacy experiment but i think that's the second book so i just started with the first book <laughs> um and I'm just like, I'm just so excited. Like, a lot of these covers are just absolutely gorgeous. I will say that uh, this 12 Friends, 12 Rex is almost entirely dominated by white authors. And, like, I see that, I recognize that. And part of it is just that, like, 
this is what people were recommending to me, which as a whole, Bookstagram is very uh, white prominent when it comes to what people read. But I think that I can make up for it in when I, what I'm choosing from my TBR cart and what I'm choosing for other challenges. Like, I think it'll be fine. I'm also just like really, really excited. I, the 12 Friends, 12 Rex helped me find the Bergman Brothers series last year, which I just freaking loved. I'm like, it's, it's one of my absolute favorites. <clears throat> Next, we are drawing my TBR cart. My TBR cart gets a place in my journal this year. So my hope for this spread is that I will go through what is on my TBR cart and I will write it down and everything will get a cute little checkbox next to it and then I will check it off. That's the goal. And so, you know, maybe when I'm setting my monthly TBRs, I will pick things from my cart. So like I know for January, uh, I had an arc of, or not January, December, I had an arc of the Fury on my shelf that I really wanted to read so I put it on a TBR and then I did it. <laughs> Alternatively though, I also had A Day of Fallen Night on my list and I made it 30% before my hold was due back and then I don't, I, I, I guess I DNF'd it, I don't know, I haven't finished it, but I like I don't have a way to finish it because I'm not going to read the physical book because I'm an ebook girly, y'all know this. I don't know. Um, but I also have a lot of nonfiction on my cart that I want to get through, so it's going to be a matter of like finding audiobooks because I, I love a non-fiction audiobook I do because like I have like my money my way and the financial diet and stuff on there that I've wanted to read for so long because I'm I'm terrified but also very interested in finance <laughs> um and you know yeah that's where we're at like but I sometimes my TBR cart is where books go to die. Like right now I have Heartstopper Volume 5 on there and I haven't read it because I've been just distracted and depressed and stuff. So we shall see. We will see how it goes. I really, I think this is, yeah, this is going to be the year where I actually have room on my TBR cart, I think. Who knows? Maybe I'll be able to downsize. Doubtful. Very, very doubtful. <laughs> but I do like it. Maybe Maybe I'll let Gil have a shelf on there. Also very doubtful, but I really love how this turned out and I'm hoping that we can do like a little TBR cart update each, uh, each month or something. But back to the buzzword readathon. <laughs> so I've been, I've been thinking about this one a lot just because it, it does seem like, you know, every every year there are patterns. There are patterns to what comes out. So, like, for example, uh, having the character name in the, in the title. So, like, Carrie Soto is back. Daisy Jones and the Six, which are both by Taylor Jenkins Reid, but the, b beside the point. Like, some of these things really are just, like, patterns within the publishing industry. And I think that that makes it a little bit simpler to do this challenge. So it's definitely supposed to be not intimidating. Also, this is the one I have not filled out yet. I mean, I haven't really filled out in a lot of this yet, but 24 and 20, 24. So this is different from the... So, okay, there are multiple challenges called 23 and 2023. So one of them, this is the backlist reading challenge version. Um, but there's also the BIPOC version. What I, what I might do is have my 24 and 2024 be all BIPOC. I think that would be fun. But I do also have a very large backlog of things on my shelf that I want to read too. But I'm excited for this. I think there's going to be some rule changes for it, which is why I haven't gone through and picked all of my books yet. Also, there's, <laughs> there's a little bit of nice flexibility in this because I think usually in January they like... Your board isn't due until the end of January, so you can just pick your, like, if I'm reading a bunch of backlist books, I'm just going to put them on my 24 and 24 because I already did them. It's like the checklist where you put things on there you already did. <laughs> but also think about, like, the books that you really, really want to read in 2024 that you missed in previous years. 
finally, we're popping in. I'm doing it. I'm going to track every book that I purchased this year because I have a problem. And it's the problem is that I buy too many books. And especially because we're, we're potentially trying to move to a new house or well, a house, buy a house. I don't want my movers to hate me. <laughs> They're definitely going to hate me. I have five bookshelves full of books. But well, that's, that's, that's sort of where we're at. I don't even know. I definitely didn't talk about what I'm excited to read in 2024. I think I'm probably going to save that for my bullet journal setup video. Uh, but here we go. We're flipping through my 2024 bullet journal setup. I am just like... This makes me so happy. I do need to figure out what I'm going to do with that blank page there. So if you have any suggestions, let me know. Um, this is full of bookish challenges and that I hope that I've inspired you to start one of these or or join one. I meant join, but if you want to create your own, do it. Let me know and I'll, maybe you'll get a spread in my, in my journal. It would be really cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, and I hope that you are reading intentionally in 2024. Please... Do your best to include BIPOC authors and neurodivergence and things like that in your reading. And as always, happy planning.